Well, hello! If you're watching this video today, it means that A, you'd love to make a potato battery, B, you love science, and C, you're trying to do it on the cheap. Well, I found a way that this might actually work. So today, I'm going to explain how to make a potato battery. So how does it work? Well, really, how does any energy work? How does a coal-fired power plant work? How does nuclear, a nuclear energy rate work? How does a battery work? How does anything work? How does a solar panel work? I got the answer. It's actually a chemical reaction. See, chemical reactions produce energy. Now, in an average battery, what you're going to have inside of it, if you were to cut it open, you would find probably a piece of copper inside of there, and you also find a piece of zinc. And between the two, these are called dissimilar metals. So between the two of these metals, what actually happens is called a chemical reaction. Now in a battery, what they have is a little bit of sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid is what will actually make the chemical reaction occur. Now in a potato, a potato doesn't have sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid can burn. And last time I opened up a potato, <sighs> no, no reaction. I think I can eat this and I won't die. So this is a very safe process. So how does a potato work? Well, you'll see that inside a potato, it's kind of juicy. And if you squeeze it and you show it, there's, there's actually juice that comes out of it. These are called electrolytes, and they work in much the same way as a basic sulfuric acid. So, I just happen to have some supplies here. One, I have copper. Now, in a lot of the videos, they're gonna tell you to use a penny. What I found is that a penny will not produce very much energy, because you gotta wrap the copper around it with some wiring. So I got these, they're called couplers and they come from any hardware store, and these will cost you about a cool 20 cents. This is a zinc plate. Now zinc is tough to come by, because a lot of places will say, well, the nails are have zinc in them, but not really. What I did was I went to my local hardware store, and I got some nail plates. These are found in the electrical section. You can ask your local electrical guy for them. These will cost you about a quarter, but they're dipped in zinc. And this is what's going to give your battery power, your battery, your potato battery, the power it needs. So I have my anode or copper. It's a fancy word for copper or any kind of reactant. That's, it's called an anode. And I have my cathode, which is made out of zinc. These two dissimilar metals, when put into my juicy potato, freshly cut, are going to produce the chemical reaction that is desired. So on one end, and I did kind of pre-do this a little bit, you're going to push in your zinc. And this is called the cathode. And on the other end, you're going to take the anode, or the copper. Ooh, it's juicy. The juice is what does all the tricks, okay? So I really push them in there. And I want to keep them far enough apart that they're not actually touching. Because if they touch, there's no way for the electrodes to go between the two and the chemical reaction to actually form. So I just happen to have a digital multimeter. Ooh. Maybe one might be required per class to make this happen. You don't need to give it to everyone. But what you do is with this multimeter, you're going to take the anode and the cathode and these readings, and I'm setting this to 20 volts, the reading, and I'm going to check it out. And I'll try to read what this actually says. Ooh, it stands up. So when I connect one end to the anode and one end to the cathode, and I have these backwards, it's reading 0.91 or 92 volts of energy coming out. Wow! That is almost the same as one AA battery. It's tremendous. Now these are in volts. So to make a light bulb move, or to actually light up, what you need is a lot of current. Okay, that's a different way of saying how much energy is actually being produced. Because volts, that's the energy, but the flow of energy is the currents. One potato is gonna give you about 0 0.91, 0 0.92 volts. Not enough to light up your average light bulb. So what you're gonna need are four of these. I found through trial and error, four is a pretty good number to get this to work. Now I've already preset these, and I'm gonna line them up in what's called a series. A series is just a row of anything, really, like a world series, it's a row of games. This is a row of potatoes. So I'm gonna push this in a little more. All right, get some fresh juices going. Push this one in, get some fresh juices. Push this one, fresh juices going. And I'm going to take, actually, another trick. This is common doorbell wire. In science kits, you're going to buy a wire that could cost you $20 a spool. This stuff, 7 bucks, 62 feet, or 65 feet, 
but there's red and white, so it gives you a total of 130 feet of wire for seven bucks. It's copper, and it works great. So I cut these into one foot sections with a little bit of copper exposed on both ends. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the cathode or the zinc plate on one to the anode of the next. And we're just basically very lightly putting it in there to make sure that there's a connection between the copper. That's all you do. And what I did, you don't have to, but I chose to do multicolored, so it's white to red. There's no special property in a red wire or a, or a white wire, but I'm gonna hook up the cathode of the next one. I'm just simply doing like that to the anode of the next one. Anode, cathode, anode, cathode. And when I get a series going, a series once again just means you know, three or four of something in a row. have to replace this one really quick for the purpose of the video. And I'm only replacing it because it needs a little bit more room for the cathode's wire to get in. There you go. It's a very simple hookup. And I'm just putting this basically right inside the potato. I'm not jabbing it in too deep because I want the copper to actually connect. Now what I have are a series. It's a series. So I'm going to take, just for fun, the end. So I'm going to be left with one cathode and one anode, one copper anode. I'll connect these last two wires, and in this case, if they're both red, I apologize, but really, remember, it makes no difference. I'm going to connect in this last cathode, and I have at the end my battery. Now, this is not enough power. <laughs> to electrocute you in any way. It's very, 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 very mild. But what you'll find is that when you connect, and this is an LED light bulb that I took from a, pair, a Christmas tree set. Now this would have been $4.99 if I got it at a science store. This in itself probably cost me a nickel. So if I connect both ends, you're gonna see, and I hope you can see it, it's alive, it's alive, it's a light. And this light is going to be produced by four potato batteries. My only catch is make sure that when you're connecting it, there is an anode and a cathode end inside of this. Now, if it doesn't light up right away, just flip it to the other side. But you'll see, you might be able to see, it's alive. And this will be the end of the video. Thank you for watching today. Have a good day.